Alhamdulillah, my first memory of Imam Hussain was when my parents used to take me to mosque uh, during Muharram especially and I used to sort of wonder why at that time people were wearing black and all the rest and things for Muharram and the interesting part was that uh, because my family has always been in service to the Holy Ahlul Bayt it was an upbringing from there that I just remember always being with Imam Hussain and uh, we have our own mehfil as well for Imam Raza in uh, Zanzibar. So those are the two places I always grew up in um, with the closeness to their Holy Ahlul Bayt. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, my first memory of Imam Hussain was when my parents used to take me to mosque during Muharram especially. And I used to sort of wonder why at that time People were wearing black and all the rest. My earliest memory is when I was uh, 12 years old and I was taken to the Husseinias. It is the first time I remember the Majalis and remember the, the, the pain and suffering of uh, a, a person, a personality in Islam named Imam Hussein. I remember eight or nine years old, we used to do Latum in the street. I always wondered why people cried for him. But uh, as I grew a bit older, I uh, understood uh, what made him different. I still remember our first recitation was in the was in the ladies' side, uh, where my mum uh, held us up to, uh, up to the mic, and uh, we recited our very first noha. I was actually born in Dar es Salaam, and I grew up in Dar es Salaam, but spent a lot of my time in Zanzibar with my grandparents, who I dearly adored, especially my grandmother, because she made me feel very special. And uh, it's lots of very pleasant memories of my time in Zanzibar. And then uh, I stayed in Dar es Salaam, studied my primary education and secondary education in Dar es Salaam for early part. And then when I was uh, 13 years old, I came to live in Portsmouth with my cousin and her husband, uh, because they were going to teach, uh, change the teaching medium from teaching maths and science in English to Swahili in Dar es Salaam. So my uh, father said, your, your cousin and your auntie are in uh, Portsmouth, so pack your bags and off you go and stay with them. And that's where I um, came to live in this country. Uh, and then um, I did my primary and secondary education in Portsmouth and went to do my A-levels in Portsmouth and for, then went to Kingston upon Thames to do a degree uh, in applied chemistry. And then uh, came back to Portsmouth because I loved Portsmouth too very much and uh, part of the growing up was uh, being involved in the local community and being part of, as it's now known, Wessex Jamaat. But we started uh, in my auntie's uh, flat in 1971 doing uh, recordings, uh, playing cassette recordings of um, our home, Ula Askar, may Allah please rest him amongst the blessed persons his majalises from the previous year's Muharram or the previous year's you know, um, functions and we used to play those at home as part of our very first majalises when we held at home and we had uh, at that time very very few families and we used to have a single fairly large sitting room but divided by a um, sofa set where the gents sat one side, the ladies sat one side and we did the Azhar of Imam Hussain there in, in that one room effectively um, and uh, alhamdulillah that progressed from there to a flat that was donate to us, donated to us by the first president of Wessex Jamaat, uh, Brother Iqbal Somji. And he gave us a small flat which consisted of two very large rooms and facilities. And uh, we started there I believe in about uh, 78 or 79, somewhere around that time. And uh, until then we had been just at my auntie's uh, doing the Azara and Khushalis and Eid and everything else and all the functions that we go through. And uh, Alhamdulillah through that there was uh, my auntie and a lady called Leila Baiversi who were the main pillars at that time who it didn't matter whether you were uh, a Shia of any particular sort. You wanted to do in Bazaar of Imam Hussain, the house was always welcome and we had something like uh, 30 students who used to come in, this is in 71 we had 30 students and about three or four families gathering for majalises and the thing was that um, we've always done that in that flat. Um, 
and my role within that was always the, being the tape recorder operator at that time. So that was sort of my beginnings of um, doing the audio systems and things at that time. And then Alhamdulillah, when we progressed to the flat, uh, we, I set up, uh, through help with uh, some others, the audio system for the, for the mosque, or it was called in the first Wessex Jamaat uh, functions were held there. And we had uh, Marhum uh, uh, Mullah Bashir Rahim, who was our first resident alim. And at that time, it was just audio. And then uh, we came along with masses of video cameras um, to be then used for video recordings. And again, we progressed through to using the video recordings and doing the azar of Imam Sain. Part of the drive to work within the community and with the azar of Imam Hussein was built into me as a child when I was growing up in Dar es Salaam and in Zanzibar. And to me, um, doing things like ma'atam was part of the essence of who I was because that was what we did. We always did ma'atam there. And in those days, we did a thing called Zanjir, which uh, was very common at that time. And now it has changed a little bit. But what happened was that the connection you got when you're with the community, it stands you in good stead because you carry that in your heart all the time. And it's important to do so and to then deliver it from your heart to your children's heart for the future development and keeping the azar of Imam Hussein going at all times. And Alhamdulillah, you know, we had so many opportunities in East Africa to do the azar of Imam Hussein. And Alhamdulillah, we've been able to replicate that to some degree living here in, in Britain as well. And Alhamdulillah, within, with our new centers that are setting up all over the place, continuing the azar, it, it reinforces that and it makes you believe and understand that you are part of a, a very, very important institution uh, under, as a Shia Ethna Shui. We were very blessed um, after we finished at the flat to have been given to, uh, the flat that was donated to us by Iqbal Somji and his family. We were able to then raise funds through Jaffa by the Ramsey's um, uh, very strong insistence that we need to have a bigger center and grow our, grow our community to build for the future. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we were able to raise uh, the money that we needed through our friends and family uh, to build the first Al Mahdi center uh, in Wickham. And uh, the thing was that. The thing that is very pleasing about what we were able to achieve there is that we had funding given to us by the World Federation to support towards the project. But alhamdulillah, through the generosity of so many people that we approached, we were able to return the funds back to the World Federation and say, thank you, alhamdulillah, we've managed to raise enough within our friends and family and, and community so that you can use this for another project where, who, where there is a greater need. Part of the issues that our problems were at setting up was we were quite far away. We, we were based in Fareham. Uh, and the reason why we were based in Fareham is because a lot of our Shia community lived in Portsmouth. And the other com part of the Shia community lived in Southampton. And Fareham was in the middle with the, uh, easy motorway access. So that's why we selected that premises. And Alhamdulillah, it was a small bungalow, but it did us for many, many years. I think something like 18 odd years. And uh, we grew from five, 10 families. And then mashallah, uh, then we were outgrowing that, especially during Muharram, we had an, an extension built to, to accommodate some more. We tried to utilize um, other methods for parking facilities because parking became a major, major issue. And all of that time, the thread that helped us and kept us all together and uh, with the motive to keep going forward was that we, as uh, some of the people who grew up in Dar es Salaam and in East Africa, had the benefit of the close-knit community and the azar of Imam Hussein and the understanding of our holy Aimma. And we wanted that for our children. So we needed a center that would be fit for the purpose. And although we were able to continue for 18 years under the leadership of many, many different presidents and community leaders at that place, 
uh, our, as I've said, our first resident alim was Mullah Bashir Rahim. And mashallah, he was a person who was very much into integrating our community and looking with such a great foresight, like Marhum Mullah Askar himself as well, for the benefit of the community. And he said the way that we as a community can grow and survive here in the West is to include links with our local communities where we live, the local neighbors, etc. And so Alhamdulillah, he set out and he identified people to say, right, I want you to go and work for the NHS. I want you to go and work for the local authority. And to me, he pointed to me to say that he wanted me to go and become a magistrate. And I said to him, hang on a second, and Mullah, with greatest respect, I have a business uh, retail news agent that I open at five in the morning and close at eight at night. How am I going to get time? He said, I want you to make time and do it because you are spreading the word of Imam Hussein wherever you work. And also, it is of benefit to the community. I mean, this was his foresight that he had, where he said that by integrating and working within the local community, when we as a community have a need, we have people in place who work in sectors that can have an influence in helping us meet our needs. And also, at the same time, we did a lot of training for the service providers and local authorities. So it was a, a give and take relationship. And that has spread very well, especially with some of our Christian communities, the Anglican Christian community, where we held um, uh, Christian Muslim gatherings for the last, I think, 18 years now, where at Christmas time, we go to the church, the cathedral, where Quran is recited, and where the people there also talk about the Jamaat, about what we do, what are our thoughts, and with all the political issues that were going around. We put our point of view to them so they begin to see us and meet us and so that they understand who we are and who Shia Muslims are and what they stand for and not the violence that they talk about and read about in newspapers and stuff like that. And so through that we were able to gain a lot of advantage for our own community through our networking and, and working with others. And part of that is also in the message of Imam Hussein, you work with your neighbor, you work with your community, you look after each other. And that is our duty and that is what we try and do. And it's very important that we also disseminate this to our future generations. My name is Muhammad Nur Muhammad. I come from Dar es Salaam. I arrived in the United Kingdom in 1961, well before Tanzania actually attained its independence. At that time here in the United Kingdom, the Muslims were very few and far between. In fact, there were no families, there were only students. For instance, when I got married, I invited virtually more than three quarters of my friends and family, and they counted not more than 10, 12, 15. That was the size of community we were here. And today, alhamdulillah, we are in the thousands. And this has happened partly because of what we believe in, that we are Shia Isnashi Muslims. We are as a family together. We are not only from the Indian extract. We have Arabs, Afghanis, Iranians, and people from other countries, and the whole Shia Ummah is one as a nation of that, that believes in Imam Hussein -salam, that is as an Imam. Azhar of Imam Hussein is an important thing in my life for the simple reason that that is the sutun, that is the pillar that keeps our Islam today standing. There was a time when Islam was in dire danger of total destruction. It was Imam Hussein who came to the rescue of it and, 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 and brought it to where it was supposed to be. That is, he put it back on the map with all the, with, with, shall I say, with all the plants that Rasulullah Khuda has had brought to us that was given to him from Allah, that is Quran and Majid. So to that extent, to me, Azar is nothing that, that, you can, that you can count as a, as, as a part, that this part is good and that part is bad. It is the bedrock on which today's Islam 
is standing. I do gardening in, in summer and in winter, meaning I've got to look after, I've got to get the groundwork prepared in winter for the things to grow in summer. When I came to this country, it was like the winter in Islam. There was hardly anything available. There was nothing. And today, mashallah, we have this garden flourishing. Things are growing. For instance, I'm talking to you because of that work which was done in the early days. The miracle of the Islam, for, as far as we are concerned, is that our parents had put in us that, that iman, that when we came here, then it flourished, it grew. And as you can see now, that Alhamdulillah, I am on Siratul Mustaqim. Alhamdulillah, since uh, the inception of Wessex Jamaat, we've always had programs in English because a lot of the people who used to have the Urdu majlises, because we were from various cultures and traditions, we couldn't understand, they couldn't understand. But so the language that everybody did understand was English. And we made a conscious effort to have all of our programs in English. And even some of our recitations uh, and praise of the Holy Ahlul Bayt are in English. Although we still have the traditional Urdu programs and the uh, Marthia and the Nawaha, you know, we all, we accommodate the need of the community. But the majority of the community mainly speak English along with their other mother tongues. So rather than have different majalises in different languages, where some people understand some, some people not understand the others, we have all of it in English. And Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Fazli Bastatu, who is our current resident alim, he's a very staunch propagator of this majalises in English. And Alhamdulillah has done very well for our center to network with the wider community. Like we've just had two weeks ago, a visit from the bishop of Portsmouth, Anglican Bishop of Portsmouth, and a lot of other Catholic, uh, uh, bi uh, not the bishop, but the Catholic, one of the Catholic canons, and other dignitaries come. And just last week, we had the MP, Mark Hoban, come as well to visit our center. And part of this is down to our, our resident alim, Sheikh Fazli Abbas Datu. My role within the community as a whole is to support wherever I can. But part of my strengths lie in support through the audio video team. So when the center was being built, built here, uh, I was consulted along with my young lad called Amir Nasser, who is an amazing young person, very IT savvy. And through our discussions with the executive and with the people of um, the project committee who were led by Shabir Bai Walji and Amir Bai Asaria, they were the project team managers who, who ran this project and talk to all of the, through their team, all of the stakeholders, whether it be the madrasa, the ladies committee, the children, uh, and they set up mothers and toddlers, you know. So every stakeholder had a session to put an input to the building of this center. And alhamdulillah, we all took where our strengths lay and took it forward. So my strengths lay in the audiovisual team. And so I set up as head of AV to work to develop a system that would be befit the quality of this center. And Alhamdulillah, we, through the blessings of Allah, we've managed to achieve that. And we have an amazing system that works really well. And as I said earlier, we had a, uh, the World Federation Exco conference here. And all of that programming went extremely well. And Alhamdulillah, we had, had hardly any hiccups. So the system works. And Alhamdulillah, we are able to deliver the message of Imam Hussein through various media. And our website team is amazing. They keep the website updated. The AV team works well. You know, all of us with our strengths, we utilize our strengths to complement each other. We have uh, uh, Yasin Bai Rahim, who is amazing with his interfaith work as well. You know, there are so many people who can be thanked and talked about within this community. The list is endless. And part of the reason is we all take part. We all engage ourselves in supporting the, the mosque, in supporting the program, supporting the events. And Alhamdulillah, we are like a big family. And that's the ethos of Wessex Yamat that we'd like to see going forward, however big we grow, but to maintain that one-to-one -one personal relationships that we develop. Alhamdulillah, part of the ethos of Wessex Jamaat is to capacity build our youth to be able to take forward not only the Iman that they carry within their hearts, but also the, the message to help, the message to serve 
in, in the way of Dakhal al-Bayt. And so what we do is we encourage participation from the youth and we've also engaged a lot of the youth to develop programs for the center. And uh, a young lad called Amar Rahim did uh, the evening of grief and sorrow, he arranged it. And uh, my son Muhammad Abbas Jaffa arranged another program which was to bring other reciters in to, to develop and to be as a guide to some of our youngsters to aspire to some of these other reciters so that we can build the children's interest to take forward. And the thing is that they are our future. Without them having the advantage that we had and the belief that we carry in our hearts, we are growing on older and we can only facilitate up to a certain stage. So we really have to capacity build our youth from a very young age, like I was inbred, the message of Imam Hussein from when I was very, very young as a child, and I still carry that today with me. And this is the thing that we want to do to engage them to f have that kind of feeling, even though in a much more difficult environment in the West. But alhamdulillah, we're able to participate without any restrictions, so that this is a blessing for us that we're able to do that. And inshallah, the, Imam of Imam, uh, the message of Imam Hussein will continue and, until Imam Sahib al-Zaman comes along, in, inshallah. Part of some of what was uh, incredible is the support that we managed to get from the local community. When we were trying to build this new center of Al-Mahdi, um, everybody said that we would not get the planning permission. And through so much lobbying and working with others, Alhamdulillah, although we got rejected the first time, when we then went for the second time for planning approval, having made some changes, we managed to win by one vote to get the planning permission. And that is nothing short of a miracle because the area where the council sits is Winchester, which is a very, very a conservative area. And uh, we were very blessed at a t difficult time when there was a lot of politics going on around Islam to actually get permission to build a new center in the name of Al-Mahdi here. And I think that in itself was a miracle of, of its own. The fact that today we are in this center is amazing, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, part of the legacy of Mullah Bashir Rahim of this integrationist policy really st uh, stood us in good stead when we went for the planning at Winchester uh, Council because the networks we had established over the years were the main supporters, especially people like the churches, the local police authority, the fire brigade, and, and so many other services, local services who we networked with. They were the ones who actually wrote letters of support for us, which enabled us to tip the balance. I mean, when you get a letter from the Bishop of Portsmouth saying that we as Wessex Jamaat are a model community to be supported in every way possible because we are a very good community, an integrative community, and, and a really good model to follow. That is an amazing achievement. And Alhamdulillah, through those sort of letters, through those networks and those supports, we were able to just tip the balance by one to get the planning permission, Alhamdulillah. It is um, very difficult for me to choose somebody to aspire to uh, on, on one individual on the holiday of Ashura because there are just so many characters with so many messages. But if I had to make a choice, it would have to be Hazrat Abbas um, because his whole dedication, his whole life was of service to Imam Hussein. And he, there was nothing in his life that was for him. He did everything for Imam Hussein and the holy Ahlul Bayt and for the children of Imam Hussein to such a degree that the level of commitment and dedication that he has shown is something that we cannot even, even begin to emulate but we must aspire to because that is the true essence of Islam. That is the true message of Islam and his commitment and his dedication to Imam Hussein and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just, 
it's, it's phenomenal. It, it, um, the sacrifices he underwent and the nobility he carries, he just, the fact that he couldn't come back to the tents without the water because he couldn't face Imam uh, Bibi Zainab and Imam Hussain. Uh, you know, there are just so many messages on the day of Ashura that each and every person has a message, even Hur has a message. You know, the, the children, you know, there are, so, there are tremendous messages from the, the day of Ashura. But I see, I feel that as the bus and his sacrifice was just a peg above in that sense. But they are all the martyrs to be aspired to. In my daily life, it's important to carry forward the message of Imam Hussein and our holy Ahlul Bayt. Because in everything that we do, in everything that we say, we are ambassadors for the Shia faith. And we must ensure that the message of Imam Hussein gets through to our people, our communities, where we work, where we live, our neighbors. And it's very important with lots of events that take place, like Hawiz Hussein campaign that took place. We shared with our neighbors the message of Imam Hussein. We invited them home to come to visit us and talk about our deen, so much so that it, in school, we do our two talks in school. And every day when you live, you have to propagate that message not just by word, but more importantly, by action. And that is the action of, the, of like Hazrat Ali, Imam Hussein, and what they used to do. They used to go out in the middle of the night and give to the needy and things. And it's important that the essence of that message is still continued today. We are, there's plenty of poor people, and we do lots of campaigns as al Mahdi to help feed the poor. We support some of the food banks. And there's a lot of... Um, institutions that we need to support because as, as Muslims, part of our responsibility is to look after others, whether they are Muslims or not. <laughs>